I couldn't put brats in my hair, or do up my buttons, or hold my husband's hand. Like, I, I really couldn't do anything or go anywhere. If I ate bread or pasta or anything, I passed out. When I had cancer, part of the reason this cancer didn't grow so fast was because I wasn't eating any carbohydrates, so it didn't t take over and ravage my body as fast as it might have. I thank God that I'm alive, absolutely. But I think that this diet helped it slow enough that when I did have surgery, it caught everything and found that the baby was happiest when she wasn't eating any vegetables. And you contacted Michaela, I believe, and said, no, you can just eat meat. That's okay, you know, you can just eat meat. It's good to have good to talk to you guys. It's been a couple of years since I last spoke with you. So, uh, you are still, are you still in Canada? Is that, is, are you guys still in Canada? Or uh, most of the time, but we're going to Arizona. We're going to go live very close to Michaela for the next seven or eight months. Oh, is she in, is she in Arizona now? I thought she was like, yes. I yeah. Oh, Scott I didn't know. I haven't keeping up with her. I know she was in like Tennessee and maybe Florida. I can't remember. So she's in oh, Arizona. Oh, she moved because she realized that she was very sensitive to mold. And so she went to Arizona. It's very, very dry feels, there. Yeah. She feels much better there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad, glad to hear it. Well, tell, tell, tell her hi for me if, if you're okay. she is here. So, sure. Um, well, let's just, I guess there's some, so a lot of people all know, I'm sure your husband's quite, you know, controversial, famous, you know, I think, and he's starting up things. You know, I, I, Canada, the Canadian psychiatry board is un unhappy with it. Myself. Did you hear about the outcome of the Supreme Court? They ruled against him. They ruled against your husband or against? Against yeah, so he, he, he has to go to re-education camp, I understand. Yeah, yeah that's the plan. Yeah. Like, yeah, really, you know, it's, 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 it's a very bizarre time. I, mean, I saw these people getting all in jail for making posts in the UK. On and Facebook, and it's, it's, yes. Crazy. Yeah, it's, it's becoming a really, uh, gosh interesting scary time in the other but yeah um let me just for those that are familiar with your story a little bit so i know you've been on a carnivorous diet for a period of time as well i know michaela i think started and opened in and and then at some point i think you do is that something you still do or are you still practicing that or are, are you doing so yes. well michaela contacted me probably maybe a month after she realized that it was starting to diminish her arthritic symptoms and so I went on this diet January 2018. And okay. once she realized that her depression was also receding, she and I both worked to get my husband on the diet. And so okay. I've been on this diet for over seven years. Wow. Okay. Yes. If only then come on, it's a team now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just almost my eighth year. I mean, I think I'll be at eight years myself. So still here. I haven't died of scurvy or what? Oh, I remember when I first started doing it, I was doing him with scurvy. Of course, I had crap and so. Um, so what, you know, the major reason you went on it was for, was it for depression or what was that? What was it? Arthritis. Oh, arthritis. I had my knees were so bad. I couldn't walk up and down the stairs anymore. And my uh, metacarpal joint was so was so dysfunctional that I couldn't put brats in my hair or do up my buttons or hold my husband's hand. Like I, I really couldn't do anything or go anywhere. It was getting quite severe. And so when she suggested, and at that point I was only really eating salad and meat. So I was really down to lettuce, cucumbers, and olives. Uh, apple cider vinegar and olive oil. That was it. I bet. Had that given you some level of relief? What was that no, sort really. of mixed? But my arthritis was still just as bad. Okay, so you got some relief, but the arthritis was still bloody you, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, two weeks, and, and two weeks of meat, and it was it, my knees started to loosen. Wow, interesting. And when you, I mean, were you being treated by physicians for you know, what, you, CMC arthritis first medical? Thing? This is a very common no. you can see what about your knees and then they won't x-ray your knees or they, they like x-rayed them they verified that i had arthritis yes okay and then the treatment off offers were like take some panic pump or medicines or really off and get that no no i didn't really want to take any medicines anyway but okay. no i had been offered anything i had stopped doing massages i was a massage therapist and i had to stop working Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I think you know, and particularly I can see with the thumb, you know, the thumbs, you know, the thumbs, which are always, you know, 
few times I've had a massage. And I, yeah, you want to get in where the trouble is, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I know a lot of them say, well, you got a lot of meat on the, the, the massage to look at the fucking eyes with them. So, so, with it, so you're on this diet, which is shit. Most people consider it this is devoid of sugar and processed food and, um, uh, you know, rain based food. You're just on meat and some, some, a few vegetables and a few other small things. And you can get relief. And then when you switch to fully, fully meat based diet, it's starting to feel better. How long did, how long did it take this team to get the most relief you have? Yeah. Are you, are you like pain free at this point? Um, yeah, virtually pain free. I, I gave up grains 25 years ago. And that was because if I ate bread or pasta or anything, I passed out. So once I realized that it, that's what the cause was, I cleaned everything out of my kitchen and the next day, I felt much more awake. So it it was very debilitating to eat grains. So I so I gave them all up. So then I wasn't really eating much dairy products either because I had stomach aches when I had milkshakes or ice cream or um milk for and so I would just maybe have a little bit of cheese on sometimes they put cheese on salads and things, you know. So I would still have cheese a little bit, but I wasn't eating any crackers. I wasn't eating any bread. I didn't really have any reason to eat cheese anymore. And so it was just a tiny little bit of cheese. And then we did genetic testing. And Michaela said I had celiac disease, or at least I had celiac genes. And I thought, yes, that's definitely my problem. And so she said, you know, mom, people with celiac can't eat dairy as well as gluten. And so I gave up this little bit of cheese and this was right around menopause. And you know, when women go through menopause, they get these little deposits of fat under their chins and on your triceps and around your middle. And so it just a little bit, a little bit of fat deposits. Well, I gave up this tiny bit of cheese. A month later, I was at the gym in my shorts, my t-shirt, and I walked out on the gym and I felt a little bit exposed because all of those fat deposits were gone. And that was just a little bit of cheese. That was the only di only thing I had changed. Yeah, and very interesting. So you said like 25 years ago, you gave up Ray and you know, all that type of stuff. And so when you had Michaela, because Michaela's, I think she's in the late 20s. She's, sure in, she's 31, I believe. Oh, she's 31 now. So, yeah. so she would have been a little kid back then. So did, did that impact you? Because I think you have a son as well, if I'm not mistaken. Did, did, that, did, did your sort of dietary restrictions impact your kiddos or were they like we the learn some of that from the family side or was it just i would have liked to answer? but nobody was nobody was that interested they were okay. happy for so, me but they didn't think that it applied to them okay so they just ate kind of the standard canadian sort of diet and you see the moms when you eat what she eats and looking yeah it wasn't until a couple of decades later where we kind of said okay wait a yeah well i took the to the natural paths monthly her whole life I yeah, was when, for when she was how old when she was she was like, she was diagnosed with I think JRA Gene Juvenile Rheumatoid Arthritis at what age was she when she got that diagnosis? Seven years of age. Okay. Yeah. And you always kind of like some people say, well, she had this really good quotes that she had in her thumb. She had an ankle replacement, hip replacement, or revision ankle replacement from 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 correct. Yeah. Um, and so that's not that's not me out. That's an actual that's an actual if you're issue she had. And then of course, um so how long did it take you to go from, you know, the, the sort of meat plus vegetables and still having arthritis to just normal or feeling right there, man? Well, I, I don't know. You know, when I first was eating a, I would call it a ketogenic diet, we were still eating sweet potatoes. Um, we were eating greens, collard greens. Uh, we were eating salad, lettuce, olives, apples, cucumbers. That was about it. You know, we had a, it was a pretty, there was a very small amount of vegetables. And we thought we were doing pretty well, but I still had arthritis. I, I came down with arthritis in my joints and Michaela's arthritis 
I don't think she thought it was going to go away. And I don't think she thought that the depression was going to go away. But but we were doing what we could to try to manage symptoms, you know. And um, we we thought we'd done pretty well at that point. But it turned out that my arthritis was bad enough that I had to stop working. And Michaela got married and had a baby and found that the baby was happiest when she wasn't eating any vegetables. And you contacted Michaela, I believe, and said, you know, you can only, you, you know, you can just eat meat. That's okay. You know, you can just eat meat. And she remembered that. She remembered that email. She didn't take action on it right away, but she did remember it. And so I think when she got more, mm, she felt like there were no more options. She thought she would try it and she tried it. And that's when she reached out to me and said, mom, my arthritis, it was probably only two weeks of being on it. My arthritis is starting to, it's going, it's getting much better. And I thought, okay, well, then let's do it. So I did it right away. Right away, I just stopped eating the rest of the the plants and started eating meat. And it was literally two weeks later that my knees started to loosen. It was probably two years before my knees were good. Because even that spring, this, so this was January. In May, I went to Croatia on a walking tour with my sister. I asked her to organize a tour for 70-year-olds because I had such trouble with my knees. Uh, but we still went down a mountain, and the day we went down a mountain, it was very, very painful. And that was a number of months after. But now, now it's been seven years, and I can walk up and down. I can go anywhere. I can do anything. You know, when I first... Another thing that happened, I had bicep tendonitis from the time I was about 17 years old. I got hit in the head with a baseball, and that compressed C5 and 6. And so I had nerve pain down my back, and I ended up getting frozen shoulder. And after that, I wasn't really able to throw a baseball overhand or play tennis. And so I had to restrict my activities somewhat. I, I was a lifeguard. And I could swim back crawl, but I couldn't swim front crawl. Well, by the time I was going on this meat diet, the summer before I went on the meat diet, when I did back crawl, I could do back crawl and lift my arm with my right hand. But my left arm, I could only lift like to horizontal, horizontal. I couldn't go any higher than horizontal. And then that summer that I was on a meat diet, I could do, fr I could do back crawl. I could do front crawl. I could do everything. My shoulder doesn't hurt at all. There's no no trouble left in my shoulder. And that's nearly 50 years later. Yeah, because you know, with frozen shoulders or adhesive capsulitis, is that to my back and some old things? A lot of times we'll see this sort of, you know, you get this, this period and there's been called a thawing out period. And within a year or two, a lot of time it resolves spontaneously. But 50 years later, it's, you know, obviously there hasn't been an intervention to cool the diet. You know, having it been there for 50 years, oh, yeah. that better will totally make a difference too. But one thing that was interesting to me is I remember, you know, when your husband, Jordan, was mentioning that he was on the diet, he said, I don't want to talk about it. I don't really want to, I, I'm, I'm just, it's, it's not something, but there was, there was a period of time, I think about maybe a year ago, maybe it was two years, I can't remember, where he suddenly started talking about it. And I don't know what prompted that because at one time it was like, hey, this is my word thing. But now he seems to be more interested in talking about. You know, do you know what the what this was at? Was he was he seeing what I'm seeing? This this incredible just destruction of society through the chronic disease. I and mean, what what you know what? Because you've been uh, Michaela's been talking about it from the beginning. I think you have as well. Um, but he was kind of reluctant to. And you know what? What he drove him to sort of do that. I think that he felt that his professional. professional association in psychology was most important and that he was not a medical doctor and that he was not a dietitian and he didn't feel qualified to speak on behalf of what would be a good choice of diet for other people and this diet was very hard on Jordan he's he's a very hospitable person um his mother is super hospitable and he learned that from her and so he all when people come over he always wants to offer 
a wide variety of foods and options. And so when it came down to being just meat, it was it was a, a real test for him to be able to still invite people over. Uh, and in fact, now, even seven years later, if people come, he'll fill the fridge with vegetables just because they're coming. Even though they know we only eat meat, they often come thinking, okay, we're going to eat meat because that's what the Petersons eat. And they arrive thinking that they're going to eat meat and they're perfectly fine with that. But he fills the fridge because of his... So it was. It, it had something to do with hospitality and it had something to do with being qualified to speak on behalf of diet and he never felt qualified now what what changed exactly people used to ask him a lot and he would always say well i'm not qualified to say um and also he's always kind of been skeptical about the changes that have happened in his life and whether it was was whether it was the diet or whether it was might be something else so he he didn't want to without scientific proof he didn't want to say that this is the cause of his recovery from depression psoriasis gum disease all uh, you know gastric reflux all these things that he was suffering from he was hesitant and i would say he's still hesitant but he has he has talked about it more and in fact we were at a family gathering not too long ago and we were at a high school reunion that it was a 45th year of our high school reunion and there's a woman there with ms and there's another woman there you know who's uh fi she has quite a bit of arthritis through her body and i was talking to them about this diet because i do i talk about this diet quite quite often if i if i think it'll help someone i i bring it up and uh he brought it up and it it's different for him so he's come to terms with the fact, I think, that this diet has been, uh, you know, I mean, it, it really did save my life, I think. And, and that might be part of it, you know, that might be part of it. Because in 2019, uh, when I had cancer, part of the reason this cancer didn't grow so fast was because I wasn't eating any carbohydrates. So it didn't t take over and ravage my body as fast as it might have. That, that, ha that has to have made a difference to him. And so it, it might have been since I was ill. Okay. Fair enough. And well, I mean, like, obviously this is sharing, you know, most a few or to lead to leaders here that's yes. not talking trying to get into you. So he's actually getting more comfortable talking about it. He is definitely and, I mean he's seen obviously he sees it himself, he sees it his daughter, he sees it his wife. Um and then, you know, as someone who I spend literally all day doing this, I've seen Gosh, thousands upon thousands. I mean, I can't even count how many people I've seen. And, and what do you think of that? Speak. I have to ask you, what do you think of that? Of which? And that's that you see thousands of people, and they're so much healthier this way. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, again, I get the need for where's the controlled trials, where's the large data, and that that needs to be done. And, and in fact, we're, we're in the process of trying to do these things. It's really hard to get this research done because it's hard to get a bait for and. Even the, the academic institutes don't want to do it because we, we were about to publish a study on uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Columbus, the Bolshevik colitis, where we got clear remission, clear carnivore intervention. And it took us a really, we, we couldn't even get it through academic IRB, so this would not approve it. So we had to do a private IRB that published because there's such a inherent, um, I guess, built in bias against us. They don't even want to entertain the idea this could be an option for it. So we're, we're struggling with that, but we'll get it done. We're, we're, we're getting there. And, um, you know, you can't, you know, this is something we see, I know we're in a very intensely divisive time when it comes to politics and everything else, and people are sort of gaslighting each other about this and that. But it's hard to really, when it comes to your own health, it's, it's hard to deny. I mean, you, you know when you have meat thing, you don't have meat. That, that's not meat up. That's just objectively verifiable to you individuals and you want to say look this is clearly looking for you. and i don't care what the may or may not be studies on this and, you know I, I always there's just people that will say hey well we don't know the long-term results of this and i said it doesn't really matter that because you don't really you can't conclusively provide long-term results on any diet and that's just the, the, the nature of nutrition science there's mm -hmm. just knowing you really high level high quality diet dietary interventions to to say this to the longer 
the this dude's rocket pistol is so I said, what's the kick three for sick and soft man the aim? Or um fix that. Because I mean, you know, I mean if, if, if Michaela wouldn't have done that, she'd still be probably depressed and still would be probably maybe even had more joints replaced and gosh, her life would be really have really good trajectory. Well, all of you guys would. And you know, I mean I think it's fair to I say that. So. I would definitely not be alive. Well, I would well, definitely I mean, not be alive. Absolutely yeah. not. No. Because I was yeah. I was diagnosed with um a Bellini tumor. And a Bellini tumor is so rare that they don't have any, re the, the cancer, the oncologists don't have any studies that show how to treat it because it kills people too fast. So they've never really had the ability to do any studies because there's no participants because everybody dies so fast. They, they diagnose this posthumously. And so when... And I went to, uh, I went to Houston, and I went to San Francisco, and I went to the Cancer Institute, MB Anderson in in Houston. And I went yeah. to uh, San Francisco University Hospital, and I talked to the oncologist there, and they said we don't have any treatment for you. You can do surgery. You can try surgery. You can try chemotherapy. You can, but we we can't actually lead you to any treatment because we don't have any data. So well, they just wish you was that? How how long ago was that diagnosis? Well, I was diagnosed with renal cell carcinoma in in uh, October two thousand eighteen, and they told me this is they told me I didn't have to hurry, and so I didn't have surgery until March of two thousand nineteen, and I had no symptoms. I had gone and been diagnosed because I had. Uh, I had caught some sort of bacterial bug on a, an airplane coming back from Croatia in May that had never really resolved. And so I went, they checked me for parasites and things, couldn't find it. And they scanned me and they found a shadow on my kidney. But I had no symptoms except for intestinal upset. And so they took out a partial kidney in March of 2019. And... I was recovering, but I started getting flank pain, and flank pain is one is one of the symptoms of this Bellini tumor. So they looked at the biopsies and they said, well, actually, we were wrong. I mean, when I went in for my post-op appointment with the surgeon, his hand was shaking as he handed me the papers asking me to come in ag again and have surgery again, because this prognosis, he thought, was fatal. So he yeah, was I'm, very... I'm looking at the data. It's, it's a two years survival rate is twenty percent. Median survival rate is seven point six months. So you've obviously well exceeded both of those. Yeah, it's been yeah. five years now. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit on you, but it's awesome. And, and oh, I, well, I, I, yeah. I, I don't doubt that. I mean, it's, it's very plausible that I have some impact on that. So it's, it's very yeah. It. That's what I think. It's I I think that I I thank God that I'm alive. Absolutely. But I think that this diet helped it slow enough that when I did have surgery, it caught everything. Because it was only, you know, it wasn't in my lymph when they took the partial out. But when they scanned me again, it was in my lymph. And so they took the rest of my kidney and all the lymph on that side. And that seemed to do it. Well, because you've got a, you've had a, you've got a full nephrectomy on one side. Um, yeah. So you have one kidney left. Yeah. And good question because carbon dioxide have for higher protein, more protein, more protein, so oh, yeah. protein's going to ruin your kidney. I, I know that's actually good. But I mean, do you have a, a, a do you still, are you still under the care of a physician that has concerns about your kidney health or how does that go? Well, for the first year after surgery, they told me I should only eat one pound of meat a day. And I did. You know, that was during the lockdown. My husband was gone because he was very, very sick and, and no one was really speaking to one another face to face. So I was really on my own and I'm a really tough person, you know? And so I just ate one pound of meat a day for a year, but I created in myself a um, something that if people are starve, a starvation, a starvation response. So, there's a 
there's something that can happen psychologically if you don't get enough food, right? So then you then you hoard food. And a lot of people who've starved their whole life will will hoard food. And I was I didn't know. I thought I had some rage or something in me because I would feel if I was hungry and not certain of food, I would get this terrible what seemed like anger, but it was actually fear. It was fear of starvation. And so my amygdala had uh, responded to my starvation and told me to be very, very careful and to not starve. And so once I figured out that, that would, that's what it was, I have recovered from that. I used to hide carnivore crisps in my suitcase because I was afraid of not getting fed. And it, it's a very funny thing to, you know, to uh, have experienced. So that one year, yeah, I only ate a pound of meat. And then they tested my kidney again. And, you know, my creatinine was too high. And they were angry at me for eating so much meat because it was too high. And then they decided that that probably wasn't a very good test for me because I'm a carnivore and I'm sticking to it. So they can't, they couldn't change my mind. And they decided that they should do different testing for my kidney. So they leave me alone now. Okay. Yeah, th th this is a problem. I, I guess I can use this option. I've talked about topics for years. And when they use a standard creatinine-based test, which it's normal for creatinine to go up on a higher protein diet in many cases. It's normal if you have a lot of muscle mass. It's normal if you work out a lot. That is not a good test for assessing kidney function. You can even other tests, whether it's a test called cystatin C, or you can just directly measure it. These are both ST methods, and you can directly measure it. When you do that, it usually shows the kidneys are fine. And every time I've seen something, like, every single time I've had a person be both tests, it's shown that it's basically my muscle lines. Um, other than it's, we don't know that kidney um, so I'm mean, interesting because was it a Canadian doctor that told you to only eat one meat, one, one part of meat a day and, and why? I want to look the rationale was for that. Well, my creatinine was so level, was so high. They didn't want me having too much protein. I see. Okay. So it was really one, one pound of protein a day, but okay. I mean, I was only eating meat. So that was, yeah, so fresh. I ate once a day and not very much. For okay. a year. Okay, so they were worried about kidney issues. Where, I mean, did they try to did, did they try to talk you out of the diet? Say hey, you should be eating the leaves and stems and stuff for the vitamin No, they, and they didn't bother me too much because uh, they they did. I just said that's all I eat, and they 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 didn't try to dissuade okay. me. They just told me I shouldn't be eating so much protein. Okay, and your kidney still works. Okay, I assume mm -hmm. right. Did My kidney work? works fine. Works fine? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, feeling, you're feeling good, and the cancer's gone, and uh, um, yeah. good for you. So, um, obviously, I mean, I'm just wondering. You know, obviously, your husband's often speaking and, and doing podcasts, and you know, interviews and whatnot. And then Michaela has her, her podcast where she's getting. I think she, she had her. Did she have her second baby or something like that? She had her second so, baby. He's ten months second old. Second little baby. So, yeah. is that, are those are, are those your first two grandchildren? Or do you have other grandchildren? Oh, I have more? others. I have two other little guys. Oh, so you got four grandkids. I do. And so I love my kids. Canada. They're so wonderful. Yeah, I'll be, I think when we're well, older, maybe I think my kids used to have kids. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm old in 60, so it's kind of like, um, yeah. Um, so, so what, how do you typically, you know, do you, I know, do you have, I think you have a podcast as well, if I'm not mistaken. I do. Is that, is that clear? I love, I love talking to people. I talk to, I have 20 podcasts in the can. I, I talk to so many oh, people. Different. I have, I have backups. <laughs> so what? And what is the, the sort of theme of what you talk about? Because I know, I mean, mine <laughs> tends to be nutrition focused. I uh, you know, I talk about some other things from time to time. Uh, obviously, your husband talks about a broad range of societal issues. I think Michaela does too, in some ways. But do you have? Are, is yours more nutrition focused? Or what do you like to discuss? Well, it started out. I was praying the rosary, so it started out quite religious. Yeah, are, you guys wanted, Catholic? are you guys Catholic? Are you guys Catholic? I'm, probably, probably? I'm, I'm Catholic. Okay. Um, yeah. I was raised Protestant, but when I was in the hospital, a friend brought a rosary, and I prayed the rosary in the hospital. And I had I had terrible complications because they took out all my lymph and they left a leak in the in the in my abdomen, and they couldn't oh, find the leak for months. And so, so I was you just you wasting, a drainage tube. Yeah, I was a drainage tube away. or something. Yeah, like I had a drainage tube and. Uh, they just gave me a room in the hospital of my own with a nice view. And I thought this looks like trouble. And I just, 
they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't, they finally sent me to the States. They finally sent me to an interventional radiologist who they hoped could find the leak, but he couldn't find it either. Very strange. Huh? He couldn't find the leak either, but he had put so much poppy seed in my system looking for it because they use poppy seed to carry the dye. Um, my, I spontaneously healed on my anniversary, which I had told Jordan months ago was going to happen. So it was uh, somewhat of a miracle that day. And I've been, I've been fine ever since. So yes, so we talked about religion on my podcast because I don't seem to have any choice in the matter. That seems to be what's the way my life is going. And I've accepted that's, that's how it's going. And so I thought I'd better face it and learn as much as I could. So I, I do like to talk to people who've had religious experiences. I like that. I've been talking to people who are on the carnivore diet more recently. Uh, I've talked to feminists because I feel like I didn't do my due diligence in learning about feminism when I was younger. And I know that it's, uh, it's time to move on from feminism. So I thought I better become uh, more well-versed in the history of feminism. So feminism, uh, the Bible, and nutrition, I would say, would be my... Yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not in I, I could not claim myself an expert in feminism. I, I struggled to, to figure out what the case is. You know, it's kind of thing all of us men do. You know, it'll get, we don't get too bad. But, um, so when you, it's time to move on, as an interesting perspective, you, you feel that like feminism has done all it needs to do and anything beyond that is becoming counterproductive. Why, why I would, would say, say so, yes. Counterproductive counter is a kind word. Is that, That's a kind word to to describe it. I think it's outright uh, harmful. I think it's harmful. And I think that we could go back to something that we know is true, which is the women of the Bible. And so I'm going to discuss feminism versus the women of the Bible and see what we can keep from feminism, but admit that it was a failed experiment and move on from what we know is true, which which is that the Bible move forward and make a better story. Move forward with a better story. I'm mean, just I mean, from from the standpoint of because you know I, I talk about nutrition all the time. So maybe some people want to talk about something different for so this is entertaining. This is interesting to me. <laughs> um, would you say this, what would you say the things that have been beneficial in you know, feminism? Well, you know, women positive. can work. Women can work. Uh, they can do whatever they want in any field they want, yeah. uh, pra practically, you know. Um, and that is education, a good thing. I guess being educated. Yeah, they can go out you and know, be educated. At, That's a good I thing. Mean, you know, if you look in some countries where women are allowed to be educated, and my lot of reason, it still happens in some places in the world where women are replicated from the school, from learning. And I think that seems problematic to me. You know, I mean, I guess they make it. Let's say they have a reason for that, but um, so there's been some some net benefit, that I would say for sure. Well, women, if uh, if women are educated, their children do better. There's research that shows that, and it, there is no um, there's no effect if, if men are educated. There's no effect whether their children will will succeed in uh in in terms of uh, their career but if a woman is educated it's more likely that their children will succeed succeed in in in, in my career, in the career, in academic, in the career. academics and careers academically and yeah and then, yeah it's for some people to find success in different different metrics and yeah and there's different ways that. but in that way in that way be, educating women is a good idea and women are you know just as helpful as, as men are in, in many, many ways, but women have lost their uh, function in the community and in the home. And part of that, I think, is technology. You know, we, we now have every convenience that you need to 
make your work easy in the home. So women have more time. So it's no wonder that we left the home, but our children suffer if we're not there. And then there's this idea that career is more important than family. And I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree. Yeah, I've, I've seen like there's a little the the kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs, um, Harrison Buck, Buckter. Uh, he was he made that statement. A lot of people are upset about the lot of, A lot of people got upset saying that no, you should not. Sort of. I, I guess he was saying that a woman, a woman raising a, a woman having children and, and building a household is is is, is a male's a good thing. And that somehow was deemed as offensive to some women because the women that don't have kids or women that have careers. And I, I'm not sure that's what his intention was, but I knew it was taken that way. And I mean, and so, um, yeah, I mean, if, if we don't have moms, we don't have anybody. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have a mom. I can tell you that. I mean, it's like, Fort Lowell, I have a mom there. I'm fortunate. My mom is still still around. She's 81. My dad, my dad unfortunately, passed away a couple years ago. In fact, I have um, two days ago. Well, That's two too years bad. Ago. Two days ago. But, um, so, do you, I mean, let me ask you this, because do you, is it guilt by association in the sense that your husband gets paid a lot of hate to like the this way? And do you get some of that? Is just is it just from, from just being associated with him, or are they do you feel that is I mean, I mean I'm, I'm sure I'm sure when he's attacked you feel someone attacked as well because you know they know why you still don't know him. But do you do you get any of that collateral damage directed your way? Well when he first made that first video about the law in Canada, Bill C sixteen, um, putting gender identity into law and um that 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 was a little tense, you know. I thought maybe somebody was going to come and throw a rock in our window, you know. It it it, it definitely felt like something was going to happen. Nothing really happened. Uh, somebody pushed over my garbage can one day. Um, that was a that was about that's that's as close as it came to my house. Uh, now and then I'd have people that were sitting on my porch when I came out in the morning, but they were usually people looking for help more than anything else. And you know. I travel with Jordan all the time, pretty much all the time. So I've been there for all the people that stop him on the street. And virtually 100% of the time, it's positive. It's positive. People come up to thank him and to tell him how their lives have become better because of what he has taught them. Uh, any of the trouble that comes is on social media. It's all on social media. And, you know, I, I, I get... I don't really get any of that. Good for you. I'm glad to hear it. I mean, I, I you know, I mean, same thing with me. I, I, I get a lot. I've got, I've got a lot of my share of critics uh, in criticizing me because I'll promote this diet that you guys are on. It's been beneficial. I've been doing you know, gosh, thousands of others. I think you idiot and stupid and whatever and hunting people. But I didn't realize that's never happened. I mean, and, and you know, maybe maybe the fact that I'm, I'm kind of a if they hide the people on it, you know, yell at or something, you're afraid I'm going to hurt them or something like that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm really just quite a nice guy. But um, I've always had a positive experience you know, like, yeah, traveling in an airport or anything from the city, you know, recognize me as well. Will be some that they hate, thank you, let's put it. But you know, you're making it, you know, you know, at least for some people, you're making it positive, which is more than a lot of people can say. <laughs> Many people, and it's not the early gospel, I'm not going to say something. The light that would affect what you mentioned off by the feedback that um, so you know, it's, it's what we're at with them. Um, what you know, as far as you know, your thought, your thoughts on I don't know, our nutrition, our healthcare system. I mean, you've been in immersed in it. I mean, the husband and Michaela has, you had, your husband has, you've had your, your, your experiences in there. The U.S. system and Canadian system are somewhat different and very much very similar. They just similar beliefs that they were how you treat them, just how you finance it is different. What are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I think if you're going to diagnose some, if someone comes to you with a complaint and it's something that's chronic, not an acute problem, not a, not a broken leg, not a, uh, not a, I guess, you know, a sore throat. I mean, something that has to be taken care of right away. Doctors do a good job of those things. But chronic disease, 
Chronic diseases, that's what I'm curious about. If somebody comes to, nobody has been helping, they're on a, they're on a lot of medications now because they have many comorbidities. Go on the carnivore diet. Go on the carnivore diet and see what happens. And, and the another thing I tell people, people, cause they'll say, oh, you know, I like vegetables or I like fruits or, you know, I don't like eating meat. I'm a vegetarian. I say, it's not about you. It's really not about you. It's about all those people that love you. You want to be the best you can be for them. And so the changes that you're going to make in your life are for those people. And you're going to make, you're going to sacrifice. Life is about sacrifice. So you're going to sacrifice all those goodies that you've been eating that you feel are a good idea, but you're unhealthy. So you're just going to give them up. Just going to give them up. You're going to eat meat and, you know, there's nothing better than a steak. So it's not, although it's a sacrifice of carbohydrates, when you get rid of those carbohydrates after about 30 days of not eating them, you don't even crave them anymore. So it's not as much trouble. It's that first month that you have to be tough and stick with it. That would save healthcare a tremendous amount of money if they would put people on a carnivore diet and let all of their symptoms subside. And then after that, they can try other foods if they want. And then you only have one variable. You have meat and you have water. And if you add dairy products, well, then you have one more and you can tell what the dairy products do. But we have such a varied diet now that you can't tell. I, I had such a terrible time trying to figure out what was wrong with Michaela. I knew it was food because her toes swelled if she ate oranges. So I knew it was food, but I didn't know it was all carbohydrates. That was impossible for me to figure out. And so it's no wonder people are confused. They have, they have chronic diseases. They don't know what it's caused by. Maybe they can't sleep at night. Maybe they have chronic pain. Um, maybe they're, you know, they, they can't see, they can't hear, their, their senses are, are dull and they don't know why. They aren't as articulate as they might be and they don't know why. Well, there's too many variables. There's just too many variables. So simplify, simplify. What do you simplify? Well, the only thing that you can only eat one of is meat. If, if you did this diet on anything else, then you would have vitamin deficiencies. But this way you have all the vitamins are taken care of. You can eat meat and you can see what happens to your symptoms. And if doctors were paying attention then they may make this decision to offer a, a dietary change. Now, the problem with everybody eating meat, you think you go to a grocery store and you walk around the outside of the aisles and you see the meat and the dairy products and I don't know what else because I don't go in grocery stores anymore. But if you go through the grocery store, all of those people that are selling all those products, that is our society. Those are the people who own all those businesses that, that sell different kinds of tapioca or whatever it is that they're selling. And if we had everybody eating meat, all those people would go out of business. That isn't something that people are going to be able to deal with. So they don't want that to happen. And the pharmaceutical company, you go to the drugstore and all of the pharmaceuticals that they're, that they're selling and making lots of money. They're not going to make all that money on pharmaceuticals because I don't I don't take any medication because I'm healthy. So what's that going to do to our economy if everybody's going to eat meat? It'll have to be a different economy. And people, the thing is, your brain will clear and you'll figure out what to do. And so it, it would be an adventure worth doing. That's what that is. Yeah, I, I often wonder, you know, because... You know, I, I see like when I when I was in the emergency room, and you would see a uh, few of my residents you would go and look at the office six six weeks or so on the shift, you know, and you'd see the same people would come back within like, three, four, five days, once a week they'd be in there. And in the US that that person is costing really millions of dollars a year in healthcare expenditures and all they're doing is, you know, medicating them, you and then they're psychotics, whatever, whatever, whatever reason they're in there for. And then turning them back in the street, and they come back again, and they repeat the cycle over and over again. And I just wonder if you would just say, hey, look, we're just going to take this guy, we're going to feed him properly for 
a couple of weeks. You know, I mean, that would be far cheaper. I mean, in, in a way, and and I do not do not, and I don't disagree that. Yeah, if somebody somebody comes out of the car because you think, why don't you see, get them on a diet? I'm doing it for a month or two, and you see what happens. You know, maybe 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 fifty percent of the people get better and go to remission, fifty percent they don't. But at least you'd save a ton of money on that fifty percent to do that. that. And so that's something that um, at least you know you think about how less expensive it would be to do it that way, and but we we don't. Or put the resources, and that's one of the frustrations I had as a physician. Because when I discovered that I had a big impact on orthopedic patients, on arthritis, when I when I first discovered the arthritis was responsible to be it was like an aha moment in my brain. It was like back in 2014 or something like that. You know, and then I said, "Oh my gosh, I'm going to do this for my patients," and I had no support from the hospital. In fact, they discouraged me from doing that because I was slowing down the business model because I was turning people over for surgery. I was making people not need surgery anymore. And and I didn't have any resources. I mean, all I really had was my nurse that would print out flyers that I printed that I typed up to him and say, "Oh, watch this video. Well, we just worked." And you know, that, 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 that's more near the level of support you often need to get people to help them do it. A proper dietary and blood cell or next disease. Sometimes you need to explain things, teach them, educate them, meet with them, hold their hand, encourage them, motivate them, provide them a sense of community. Um, you know, and then and then and then you know actually support what they're, they're doing. Right now, so many people have told me about the doctor, hey, that has nothing to do with the problems. Um, it's bad luck. It's genetics. We don't know. It's video. It's more of a idiopathic. It's, it's one of those things we call for disease. We don't know what the cause is. And so we have all that on. And most well, that's one of the reasons we started our company with Bear. Obviously, we, now we have physicians from all fifty states that um, literally. Um, are there to help like, people and being able to support team and own network and education and, and you know technology based things that people just want to take measuring how come and so on and so forth. So it's interesting. I, I just it's interesting to see where healthcare is going to be going in the next you know decade or so. And I, I see it's going to be more and more to the uh, AI based you know computer computer pro, you know, computer will interface with you and tell you what disease I have and maybe you stick your finger a little little uh, uh, remote sensor it'll tell you what your blood looks like and you can immediately prescribe you a drug and put an Amazon drone and deliver to your house all afternoon I and mean, this is where I think some of the medicine is going and I mean, everyone just been not and they won't be better I and mean, then they'll just be symptoms to be somewhat somewhat managed or something and so on and so forth. So, um, what you know, I guess from from a um, sort of inspirous, inspirational stuff. What what is inspiring you these days? Are you are you see are you are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? I mean, I mean, we see a lot of quite on people in the world going on right now in many ways. I mean, what are your thoughts about where we're headed as a society, as a as a as a country, as countries? Are you? I mean. A lot of people don't like Canada right you now. They, they they don't like the like the leadership. They feel it's been very authoritarian, very very still leaning towards communism in a way. Um, and so I don't know. I mean, what do you what do you guys think? I mean, what's your, what's your personal belief about where things are going? I think there's a lot of healing that has to happen. There's a there's been many mistakes made. We've gone down the wrong road in in many respects. Our government in Canada, yes, is. Um, as close to communism as I want to get, that's for sure. I don't want to go any further down this road of, of uh, socialism and uh, groupthink. Um, we need to really make changes at the local level. And the people who live in communities have to take responsibility. And the more responsibility that people take at the community level, the less... That's responsibility you leave to the people at the top and if you don't leave if you don't do your if you don't have responsibility if you are letting your responsibilities go if you're not taking the next right step in whenever you see something that has to be done then you're leaving that responsibility to someone who will take over for you and that won't be in your best interest because the people who are taking over for other people, they like control. 
they like control and they like to dictate who you should be and who you shouldn't be and what you should what you should do and what you shouldn't do and if you leave that open that's what's going to happen and and i think that is what we have done um i think that people have become complacent we've never really had that much trouble in north america political trouble mm -hmm. and you know jordan and i have been traveling all over the world and we go to Eastern Europe and the people in Romania say, what are you crazy people playing with over there? Don't you know that we were under the the thumb of communism until 1992? And we finally, when we finally crawled out, um, we are so relieved to be scraping our ourselves off the ground now. And now you're becoming, you're making yourself, you're letting yourself be open to these crazy ideas, these very, these ideas that will take away all your liberties, you know? What what do they say? Oh, we'll do these things for you. The more they do for you, the more they control they have, the more they take, the more they take away. I mean, we've seen what's happened in China. They now have a social credit system, you know, and now people, if you don't have a high credit, social credit system, maybe you can't get into your bank account or maybe you can't even get into your car because your social credit score is too low. Well, that's what happens when you leave the responsibility up to the leaders of the country. So we have to take responsibility. So we we do a lot of talking. We talk to thousands of people about taking responsibility, about individual responsibility for yourself, for your family, and for your community and if you have something left then then further and further and that will turn things around i'm sure it will turn things around so it's, it's up to everyone to wake up but the problem is we're all eating all these crazy things and i don't think people are healthy enough to think through this so we have to help uh, people realize that processed carbohydrates we processed carbohydrates. We thought it was a great idea. Then they said they were going to process meat. We said, oh, wow, that, that's a very bad idea. It was like, well, that's just the next step. You've processed absolutely everything in the carbohydrate world. Now it's going to, to meat. Well, what did processing carbohydrates do? It created heart disease, dementia, cancer, like all the, all the chronic diseases because we started thinking that we'll take the easy way out and we'll just eat easy foods and those easy foods are what is going to nourish our families it's like no no it didn't work yeah i think i think we're killing ourselves with some union and some comfort and i mean yeah. you know, that's a lot of where i can be when touch off and eat to the gym i feel over of course you mean let's settle with the hunting or raising to be better that way with odds yeah. Um, you know, I guess with, with China, because I think it's sort of China, North Korea, uh, Laos, Vietnam, and Cuba, they all truly have this big hit from this country right now. When other countries are seeing me aim thing on that direction, it seems, I don't know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, 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 I'm you know, taking more responsible local, but it, you got to first start with yourself. You got to, you got to first figure out how to take care of yourself first. Um, and I, and I like the fact you said, and health is not just about, it's about those dependent upon families, children, and spouses, or close people with close around you. And, and, and not, not saying it's only about when, when my mouth, what I, my health impacts those nipples around as well. So you kind of realize that you bring yourself to that, but it also, I think to why and, and I, I see this all the time. People that when they improve their health and they, they start eating a more species appropriate, taking an appropriate diet, that that within more suited towards the brain just starts working. They start thinking more clearly. They start saying, Wait a minute, the stuff that I was going all along with is, is not necessarily my best interest and best interest in my family or so it's so it's a, it's, 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 Good yeah, point. I think if you're having trouble with your family, understanding what it is that everybody's doing, take everybody back to meet uh, for a month and then talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and I wonder, you know, like I said, I, I just wonder if there's a lot of, you know, I suspect you're particularly when we see it in kids. So many kids now are suffering from mental health issues, whether it's depression, 
some sort of dysphoria or anxiety or suicidality that I'm I mean, for every day, I just wonder how much of that would be mitigated by feeding them. No, well, the, 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 the proper food. I, I just want that you make a big difference. You want them that you need them back. Well, that's a mother's job, isn't it? That's a mother's job to feed their children in a way that will benefit them the most. And I think with all of the confusion now, it would be better to simplify. And the only thing you can simplify back to is meat. So that, I think, is... Um, a place you could start and and, and it won't damage, it won't cause any harm. It won't cause any harm and it'll help people to have a clearer idea of what's going on in the world and what's going on in their lives. And then maybe they can be a little bit more self-reflective of how they have brought harm to themselves and to the people around them and how they might change for the better. Yes. Reasonable advice and advice I gave a lot of people for long. Well, Tim, I don't want to hold you too much long. We usually keep this to an hour, and I mean, we've had a few times. Where, is there something, if there's something you want to share, or is there, is there a mechanism by which people, like, you've got a black thoughts, maybe you want to share how to, how to find more information about what you're, what, you're, what you're sharing? You could just look up Tammy Peterson podcast on YouTube or on X. Um, there'll be shorts there. There'll, my I have a good producer, and he, makes good clips so you can look at clips and uh, my podcasts are usually about 90 minutes sometimes they're a little shorter sometimes they're a little longer I'm not as exact as you to do an hour but uh, I really enjoy speaking and I hope that the people that I talk to uh, can bring some um, some just something to someone that said they can say aha that that's a good idea Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here and, and say hi to your family for me. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll talk. And hopefully we'll get in person one day. So anyway, thanks so much. I hope so. Very All nice right. to see you again. Yeah. Bye bye now.